This morning, we're honored to have Mr. Peter Adler, a master level mediator, facilitator, and joint fact-finding practitioner, offer a moment of contemplation. Mr. Adler is a former executive with the Hawaii Justice Foundation, Hawaii Supreme Court's Center for Alternative Dispute Resolution, and the Neighborhood Justice Center. He recently returned to Hawaii after serving as president of the Keystone Center in Colorado for nearly a decade, and is currently working on several projects in the state. Good morning. President Kochi, members of the Senate, you actually do me great honor by letting me do this. So thank you. I am, as you just heard, a mediator and a planner. Uh, I live for watching people and helping people get past some vexing issues, come together, do good work, take stock, make plans, uh, and most of all, produce results. So that, that's what I do. I've been doing that for a while, and I continue to enjoy that and I continue to worry sometimes about the stubborn problems you face and we face as a community, whether it be the GMO pesticide issues on Kauai, the 30 meter telescope on the Big Island, uh, the water issues on Maui, but I know you're going to take care of all that this session. So, um, look, I'm going to keep it brief. We, I, you know and I know that we live in very adversarial times. And Pew Foundation confirms that there is declining trust in virtually all institutions, churches, schools, universities, sorry folks, um, and, and most of all government. There's just declining confidence that things can happen. And there are lots of reasons for this, but I do believe that part of the, the problem sits with the way we try to manage disagreement and that we continue to need good forums, auxiliary forums, adjunctive forums, where we can get people together to try to uh, reach consent so that lawmakers like yourselves can do your work. Um, I recall a story when I was away. I met a, a very prominent politician in Ohio who was a wonderful storyteller and a wonderful man. And he told me, he said, government's a little bit like this sign I saw in a small town in Ohio. It said, Chester Smith, veterinarian and taxidermist, either way you get your dog back. <laughs> so. We need live dogs, we need solutions, and you know that. And we need dogs that can live for a while, that will be stay healthy. So America's systems, as you well know, are designed to, to let us raise tough issues. We value that, we prize that in a democracy. And that's the, the part, the conflicts and the disagreements that get all the press. But the other half of the equation is making artful deals and helping people advance mutual interests and achieving good solutions. So there's an there's a African proverb that I learned that says, if you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go far, you got to go together. So I speak only for the business of accords, uh, of reaching good, serious collaborations, of cooperative problem solving, and finding agreements both inside this building and outside, because you have to be the champions for that. I know firsthand how difficult that can be. The differences of opinion are sharp, and we live in a society in which those are amplified and accentuated. But I really believe through dialogue and negotiation, we produce smarter outcomes. Not nicer process always, but smarter outcomes. So for me, I believe consensus is the ultimate point of the realm, and that's the message that I would give you to think about. Thank you. For a consensus guy, he's a, the thief, apparently. <laughs> Thank you, Peter. Now that I got my papers back, with the, will the Senate please come to order? Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Senator Baker. Senator Chan Oakland. Senator Dela Cruz. Senator English. Senator Espero. Senator Gabbard. Senator Galateria. Excused. Senator Green. Senator Harimoto, Senator Ihara, Senator Inoue, 
Senator Kahele. Excuse. Senator Keith Agaron. Senator Kidani. Senator Kim. Senator Nishihara. Senator Riviere. Senator Ruderman. Here. Senator Shimabukuro. Here. Senator Sloan. Here. Senator Taniguchi. Here. Senator Thielen. Here. Senator Tokuda. Here. Senator Wakai. Here. Mr. President. Present. 23 present, two excused. Thank you. The chair has read the journal of the preceding day and approves the same. Are there any introductions this morning? Mr. President. Senator De La Cruz. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd just like to acknowledge employees, friends, and supporters of the Wahiawa General Hospital. They're here today to support um, House Concurrent Resolution 118, which passed the Health Committee in the House. So if they could be, please stand and be recognized. And I'm not sure if he went to session already, but Representative Marcus Oshiro. Well, let's give him a hand anyway. <laughs> thank, uh, thank you. Further introductions? Senator English? Uh, Mr. President, members of the Senate, I'm very pleased to introduce uh, my cousin Naomi Koilani, who's here from HANA. Naomi, would you please stand? Thank you. Further introductions? If not, Senator Kidani? Thank you, Mr. President. We have two institutions represented by guests with us on the floor today to conclude our 2016 Education Week presentations. And I truly believe we have saved the best for last. First, we recognize a program that has brought dozens and dozens of teachers into Hawaii's classrooms where they fill a very critical void. Their cause is doing right by youngsters in our schools who need help the most in the name of enhanced educational equity. I call on Senator Kim to tell us more about Teach for America and to introduce our guests. Senator Thank Kim. Thank you, Senator. Mr. President, it's a pleasure to welcome Teach for America Hawaii, which is celebrating its 10th anniversary in our islands and 25 years in the United States promoting educational equity. Since 2006, the Children of Hawaii has been enriched by 300 core members working as teachers in difficult to fill positions such as special education, mathematics, and science, and in difficult to place jobs on Oahu's leeward coast or rural areas of Hawaii Island. They have touched the lives of more than 15,000 students with their willingness to invest tremendous amounts of time, effort, and resources, and the result has been improved academic achievement levels. These Teach for America core members also take on leadership positions at extracurricular activities that build strong bonds between faculty, students, and the community. I'd like to first introduce Jill Baltimore. Should stand. Jill is Teach for America's Hawaii's Executive Director, a 1995 core member who taught in, Wa in Washington Heights, New York. She's practiced law at Goodsill, Anderson, Quinn, and Stifle for seven years before joining Teach for America. <laughs> Ani Gude, she is the Hawaii's External Affairs Manager and a 2010 core member who taught kindergarten and second grade at Kahakai Elementary School. She's a Fulbright Fellow. She taught English in the Slovak Republic. She has a bachelor's degree in sociology and Asian studies from Colorado College and a master's degree in teaching from Chaminade University. Welcome and thank you. <laughs> Colleen McInerney, McInerney core member since 2013, is a teacher at Wheeler Middle School, where she is also the math and science department chair. She previously worked one-on-one -on -one with students receiving special education services at Campbell High School in Ever Beach. Thank you. Cameron Kubota. Core member since 2013, is a mathematics teacher at YNI High School and a cohort leader for the Hoku Scholars Program. 
He, wait, I'm not done, sorry. <laughs> he attended Kailua High School, Pepperdine University, and Chaminade University. Thank you, Cameron. <laughs> and finally, we have David Miyashiro. He is the external manager and 2008 core member at Wahiwa Middle School teaching special education. He previously worked for U.S. Senator Maisie Hirono in Washington, D.C. He's a graduate of Punahou School and Brandeis University and holds a master's degree from UH Manoa and Harvard University. So we congratulate all of you, Teach for America, on your anniversary, and we thank you for your leadership, service, and for inspiring us by your good example. And also with us in the gallery, Mr. President, we have some Teach for America supporters, friends, if you would stand to be recognized. Thank you. And now I pass it back on to Senator Kidani. Senator Kidani. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Kim. Mr. President, 2016 marks the 40th anniversary of the establishment of the University of Hawaii, West Oahu. Those of, the, those of us who have been around a while can remember the little campus that could nipping at our heels, reminding us that they were still around and very much worthy of our support. Following Board of Regents approval, West Oahu College held its first classes in high school facilities in 1976. A few years later, seeing the value of highly flexible class schedules, a commitment to serve non-traditional students, and a can-do, must-do approach to its mission to serve the underserved, Regents approved programs and degree expansion and renamed the school University of Hawaii, West Oahu. About 30 years from its humble beginnings and with new temporary facilities in portables at Leeward Community College, West Oahu became a four-year campus in 2007. Ground was broken for the permanent Kapolei campus in 2009 and just over 2,000 students were enrolled as the doors opened in brand new facilities for fall semester classes in 2012. On the horizon for UH West Oahu are construction of a new administration building and facilities for instruction in the allied health services. With the legislature's support, an expanded UH Academy for Creative Services Digital Media Production Center is on the drawing boards and in this year's budget. Those of us who represent the several communities around the new campus marvel at the par partnership UH West Oahu developed with Waipahu High School that now enrolls 600 high schoolers in early college classes. The new campus is a spectacular focus for our communities, and we are very proud to celebrate the successes of our UH West Oahu campus. Mr. President, the UH West Oahu campus is officially located in Senator Gabbard's district. I would like to call on him now to continue our presentation. Senator Gabbard. Mahalo, Mr. Prez. As the senator from District 20, uh, known affectionately as God's country, uh, I can't tell you how much it means to have UH West Oahu in our district. It, is, it has become the flagship of the whole west side and while we are celebrating the 40th anniversary, I would just remind my colleagues a little history. It was actually in 1966 when the legislature made its first appropriation for $300,000 for planning for UH West Oahu. 46 years later, 46 years later, we opened the doors in 2012, uh, much to the happiness of, of all the people who live out there. So I just want to say, uh, you've heard the saying how government, the wheels of government turn painfully slow. I cannot think of another example better than this one here. Uh, so I would like to say mahalo to all of you, our, the colleagues who have uh, helped to get this campus open and for your continuing support over the years. Mr. President, we have a, UH West Oahu has a new presence at the capital of this session. This is the very first internship of its kind for students at UH West Oahu. These students are leading the way for future students to get involved with the political process here in Hawaii. Nine students from various programs at the Kapolei ca campus have been assigned to senators and reps for internships for which they can earn college credit. 
These members of the Capitol Class of 2016 are in the gallery with us this morning, and I would like to ask them to stand and be recognized. But first, I would also like to recognize their mentors for the internship. Their role in this also must be acknowledged. We have Ken Inoy and Dwight Takamine. Former set, please stand. And Rufino, Dan Magliba, and Russell Kokubun could not be with us today, but these gentlemen are adding wisdom to this great program. Please stand. Good to see you, Dwight. Aloha. And now for the house interns, they are Ronnie Augustin, Isaiah Baklan, Anna Lillis, and Marasha Moore. If they are still here, there they are. Please give them a hand. Aloha. And in the Senate, we have the services of Patrick Alvior, Tori McCann, Angelo McDuffie, Joy Leanne Santos, and the very capable young man who has been a tremendous help in my office this session, Mr. George Kalensis. Please stand. And on a personal note, George, thank you for all your help. We hope you've, you've learned some things to do uh, during your time with us besides how to make coffee. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, and at this time, I'd like to turn the floor back over to Senator Kidani. Mahalo. Senator Kidani. Thank you, Mr. President. Colleagues, with us on the floor today are senior executives and guests from the University of Hawaii. I would like to start by introducing our Board of Regents Chair, Mr. Randy Moore. Randy, please stand. <laughs> also President of the University of Hawaii's 10 campus system, David Lassner. Our Interim Chancellor of UH West Oahu, Dr. Doris Ching. And the immediate past Chancellor at UH West Oahu, Dr. Rockney Freitas. And Rockney, if you would remain standing for just a little while, Rockney. Colleagues, it is hard to imagine that someone with such imposing stature considers himself shy and wanting to stay out of the limelight. We have tried repeatedly to invite this gentleman to our chamber to recognize his commitment to the state and to the university and to wish him well in retirement, but we have been unsuccessful until now. It would take way too long for us to run through Rockney's resume, so let me do the short version with some acronyms. OSU, Oregon State University, the NFL, OHA, Kamehameha Schools, and finally, UH. Beyond the professional credentials, we know Dr. Freitas to be a true gentleman with a wonderful capacity for bringing people with divergent views together. And as we say in our congratulatory certificate, a community statesman. Rockney, mahalo for your service to the state of Hawaii, to the University of Hawaii, and to the people of Hawaii. Mr. President, with Rockney today on the floor is his son, Makoa. Makoa, please stand. And Makoa's son, Rockney's son, Rockney's grandson, Rockney. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for joining us today. Um, I believe in the gallery we have some fans and supporters of UH West Oahu. Um, if you could please stand and be recognized. Wendy Tatsuno. Wendy, thank you. Cindy Viluan. Thank you. And Christine Nevis. Thank you for being here today. Mr. President and colleagues, Mahalo for your participation in our 2016 Education Week presentations. I pr appreciate your help and will look forward to next year when we can once again recognize excellent school leadership, excellent teachers, and outstanding students who inspire us all. I would like to request a short recess at the appropriate time so that we may personally greet our guests. Thank you, Mr. President. Certainly, thank you. Do we have further introductions? Senator Taniguchi. Thank you, Mr. President. I just wanted to add my welcome and best wishes to the former Chancellor, Rockney Freitas, 
Um, he's a constituent of mine and long active in our community, so welcome. Thank you. Further introductions? If not, Chair will call a short recess for the purpose of greeting our honored guests. Members of the Senate, please be seated. Will the Senate please come back to order, Madam Clerk? On page two, Governor's Message number 729 makes a correction to Governor's Message 672, and Governor's Message number 730 informs the Senate that the Governor has withdrawn a nomination to the Language Access Advisory Council. File. On pages two through 13, Standing Committee Report numbers 2989 to 3054 for adoption. Senator Green. Mr. President, I move for the adoption of SCRs 2989 to 3054. Senator Sloan. I second that motion. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Any objections? If not, motion carried. At the bottom of page 13, deferred matters. House communication number 363 returns Senate Bill 2312, Senate Draft 1, which passed third reading in the House in an amended form for agree, disagree. Defer until Monday, March 28th. On page 14, advise and consent. If there are no objections from the members, we'll be taking advice and consent on consent. Standing committee report number 2985 on governor's message number 607 for advice and consent it, for adoption. Is there any discussion? Senator Shimabukuro. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Um, your committee on Hawaiian affairs um, had the pleasure of meeting Ren Westcote III um, for a term to expire June 30, 2019 to the Hawaiian Homes Commission. We found that Mr. Westcote's professional expert experience and perspective will be of great asset to the Hawaiian Homes Commission. Specifically, our committee finds that Mr. Westcote has work experience as an educator, business owner, nonprofit director, and energy developer of renewable energy, finance and education, and social programs, which are of particular importance to Native Hawaiians and the work of the Hawaiian Homes Commission. Mr. Westcote is committed to improving the lives of Native Hawaiians. He considers the housing of Native Hawaiians to be a priority and primary purpose of the Hawaiian Homes Act and hopes to assist in the implementation of a sound financial plan that enables the Department of Hawaiian Homelands to manage and grow its financial assets. Your committee further finds that Mr. Westcote has been nominated to the Hawaiian Homes Commission based on his knowledge, experience, and commitment to improving housing in the state. And I hope that my colleagues will also support his nomination. Thank you. Thank you. Further discussion? If not, do we have unanimous consent? 23 ayes. The nominee for the respective governor's message has been confirmed. Mr. President, may I be allowed a late introduction? Senator Shimabuku, please proceed. Thank you. I wanted to um, introduce Mr. Ren Westcote III, who's in the audience in the gallery. Thank you so much. Adoption of resolutions, standing committee report numbers 2986 to 2988 for adoption. Senator Green. Mr. President, move for the adoption of standing committee reports 2986 to 2988. Senator Sloan. I second the nominations. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Any objections? If not, motion or said resolutions have been adopted. On page 15, third reading. If there are no objections from the members, we will be taking third reading on consent. Third reading of House Bill 2362, Senate Draft 1, relating to the Hawaii Workforce Development Council. Is there any discussion? Do we have unanimous consent? 23 ayes. Thank you. House Bill 2362, Senate Draft 1, passes third reading. Third reading of House Bill 2448, Senate Draft 1, relating to statutory revision, amending various provisions of the Hawaii Revised Statutes and the Session Laws of Hawaii for the purposes of correcting errors and references, clarifying language, and deleting obsolete or unnecessary provisions. Is there any discussion? Do we have unanimous consent? 23 ayes. Thank you. House Bill 2448, Senate Draft 1, passes third reading. Referrals and re-referrals. Referrals and re-referrals are made in accordance with the supplemental order of the day, which may be distributed to your offices later today. No further business, Mr. President. Are there any announcements? Mr. Senator President. Inouye? 
Yes, on a point of personal privilege, Mr. Please President. Please proceed. Um, I ask you and our colleagues um, to thank Senator Kidani and her hardworking staff for the outstanding Education Week presentation that we have seen uh, these past days. Kudos to all of them. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator Baker. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, brief announcement, please. Please proceed. Uh, today, uh, we're asking any of you that uh, still have Easter baskets to bring them to my office, or you can uh, join us in the rotunda in the morning uh, at uh, 10 o'clock and bring your Easter basket then. We'll have the Easter bunny available and prepared to take pictures, so please join us. Thank you. Thank you. Further announcements? Senator Kim? Thank you, Mr. President. I rise on point of personal privilege. Please proceed. Mr. President, I receive um, this thing from the news, KHO on TV, and also saw it on TV, but I think most of you recall that this is where Ledward Kaapena was playing music at our airport, and he was told that he couldn't play. They stopped him. Um, apparently, that's our airport rules, but it's very sad that we have that. I remember going to Nashville, Tennessee, coming off the plane and at the airport being greeted by a country western trio, and I thought that was wonderful. Came back here and talked with HTA and asking them how we can bring our Hawaiian music to our airports. And so having seen this, that someone um, of Mr. Kapena's uh, statue, and he says that he's been doing this at airports around the world for decades, so he was surprised when he was told to stop playing music there. And so I think that we need to really take a look at the, our rules at the airport and see how we can infuse our Hawaiian music. And if we do have um, our local musicians that are willing to play, we certainly want to welcome th that. He was asked, um, will you play music again at the airport? And he said, yes, that's not going to stop me because I just did it again in Maui. And so uh, we thank Mr. Kapena for his music, and hopefully we can, uh, we can remedy this. Thank you very much. Thank you. Further announcements, Senator Inouye? Thank you, Mr. President. Um, on a point of personal privilege, please. Please proceed. I just want to add, um, thank you, Senator Kim, for bringing that up. Just to let you know that we have been in discussions with DOT as well, and they are reviewing their administrative rules uh, as well, and will be devising um, new, uh, the, it, new rules, and will be also making sure that it goes out to public hearings as well. And we all remember when it first started back in the days before TSA and before 9-11 when uh, there were disruptions at the airport such as the Hare Krishna programs that they did at the airports and that was the start of the administrative rules um, implemented then. Uh, however, after TSA, then we found out that they're not allowed in the airports anyway Way. So I think it's about time that we look and see that we uh, go back to the rule system and see if we can make some changes as well. I've also made a request to, um, because with the upcoming Mary Monarch Festival, we know that we're going to have entertainment at the airports um, as well, and so they've been instructing the personnel at the airports not to disrupt the entertainment for that period in time. Hopefully, uh, we can. Um, participate in the administrative rule process forthcoming. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Thank you, colleagues. Further announcements? If not, the chair has one. The deadline to file standing committee reports on House bills that need to pass second reading and move laterally to the final Senate committee is 7 p.m. this evening. Senator Green. Mr. President, I move the Senate stand adjourned until 11.30 a.m. tomorrow. Senator Sloan. And God, uh, we're mindful that Senator Gabbard told us how slow the wheels of government move. Your help in overcoming inertia and moving them faster would be appreciated. Thank you. I second the motion. Thank you. It's been moved and seconded. If there are no objections from the members, the Senate will stand adjourned until 11.30 a.m. tomorrow.